So right on your screen, what you are seeing is the way the new URL portal looks like. There was an old one and now the new one. I'm making this video in December of 2023 and this is the very first month we are doing the VAT return, the web-based return. Previously, the way VAT has been filed was that you go to the portal, download a, an Excel template, you fill it in, and then you upload it. That is how it was in the pre previously. But effective this month moving forward, the way we file VAT has changed. Now we are going to just be um, submitting what we call a web-based return. In today's session, I get to show you how we do that. I am going to show you using a company that deals in standard rated supplies, exclusively standard rated supplies. I am using that as a case study just to show you how we navigate the VAT return web-based um, return, you know, the web-based return, how we navigate it. So now, I understand when it comes to VAT, there are other aspects when it relating to VAT, things like input tax apportionment. This happens, this is applicable for companies that deal in mixed supplies. The case study that I'll be using does not deal in mixed supplies. In other words, there is no such thing as zero rated supplies or exempt supplies when it comes to it. So we shall not be exploring that. Then there are other dynamics of VAT like deemed VAT, uh, withholding, VAT withholding and all those things. The case study that I'll be using is not exactly going to look into those things. It, it, they are not applicable to it and so because they are not applicable to it I am not going to hint on them because I want to make this video as short as possible however if there are certain aspects of VAT that you would like me to explore in relation to the new web portal just let me know in the comment section below and I will be addressing them in future videos so today's session is basically just to give you an overview on how we file the VAT return in the new way or on the new portal that is the web-based VAT return and that will be it by the end of the video so again my name is Arnold and now let's get to it so already like you're saying uh, this is how the thing looks like uh, definitely the way we log in also the way we log into the portal changed it's not like though it used to be in the past so if you are to log into the new web portal, we are going to go to the top right corner right there. There is this link, a word here, login, as you can see. So I'll click on that, login. If I click on login, there are various portals here or there are various links that you, where you can go. I'm going to, let me discuss them one by one. From the bottom here, we have e-learning. In case you want to learn about taxes, you just click here. And you log in via e learning if it is touch point you have an issue that you would like to raise to ura you click on touch point and you're there then this is bwims bwims is bonded warehouse information management systems this is applicable for taxpayers that have warehouses and uh, the system here simply manages stock of warehousing okay stock coming in stock getting out of the warehouse so if you want to log into the BWIMS portal, this is where you go. Then we have DTS, that is domestic, uh, Digital Tax Stamps. This is for people like mostly manufacturers. So if you are using this functionality, this is where you go. Then we have EFRIS, that is Electronic Fiscal Receipting and Invoicing Solution. Definitely, this is where you go. Now for us, for the purposes of making this video, we are interested in logging into the portal. So this is where we're going to go. And that is where I'm going to click. So I'm clicking the portal right there. So uh, it, it takes us to the login page. So that's it, the login page. So let me go ahead and log in. So I have finished logging in and this is how the login page looks like. So um, this is how the new login page looks like. We have three uh, menus. We have the e-service menu, the reports menu, and then we have other platforms right here. So since we're interested in filing VAT, so what I'm going to do is simply going to go to the return. I'm just simply hovering my mouse over these menus. So as I hover my mouse over these menus, I go to where the return is, the word return right there is. 
So when I get to the word return, as I hover my mouse over it, it's going to expand into a sub menu. As you can see here, this sub menu here, we have file return as a subheading here. So I go to where monthly VAT return is monthly value added tax. So I'm going to click on that, get right like that. So as I click on that, a monthly VAT return. So definitely we all know that a, a return, a monthly VAT return is filed every month. So I'm going to go ahead and select the months. So I'll go and select, this is starting from last month, November from 1st November. When I select the first month, the second month, the, the last date of that month will automatically populate like you're able to see. So now that it has populated like you are able to see, then um, definitely we have taxpayer details. We have two tabs here. We have the taxpayer details tab. Then we have the return history tab. When I click on the return history tab right here, this is where the historic, this, the returns. As far as this web based portal thing is concerned, they will be showing up here. Since this is the first one, there are no returns that are populated here. So let's get back here to the taxpayer details portal, uh, tab. I click on that. So this is what we have. We are filing a return for November from 1st November 2023 to 30th November 2023, like that. So um, I can, uh, we have two options here. I can either click view return or I can click submit return, okay? So if I click on view return, if I click on that right there, view return, like that. After clicking on view return, you realize that on top here, other tabs already show up. The tax computation summary, the sales, the purchases, the input tax allowed, VAT with credit, blah, blah, blah. They show up, they over auto populate, okay? Now when they auto populate the tax computation summary, if I'm to just click on this, some of these tabs just to show you what is there. If I click on it, you simply see that it's just simply showing us information. It is showing us information from um, about that, that we're just about to submit. Remember, in this new way of filing returns, um, all this information that you're seeing, for example, here you're seeing these figures here, all this information is coming in from um, EFRIS. The information is picked from the EFRIS system, and all we have to do here is to simply either accept it or dispute a few figures here and there, and that's it. So it has just been simplified like that. So if you if have to come to the, the, the sales tab, you know, as you can see here, remember the company that I was telling you, this company is exclusively dealing in standard rated sales. That's why when you come to the sales tab, it's only showing local standard rated sales here. All this information you're seeing is being gotten from the EFRIS, the EFRIS portal. In our previous way of filing, we had to first log into EFRIS, get that information manually, populate it into the web-based return, or I mean, in other words, populate it into the Excel, then upload. To this time, um, the information is being populated here automatically. So this is what you're seeing here. Now, you realize that all these cells you're seeing, they are gray. Okay, every tab I click on, the cells are gray. They are all gray, they've been locked. It means that we, we, we can't edit them, okay? Let me get back to, to the first tab here of taxpayer details. It's because we clicked on view return and when we view return, when we click on view return, we are basically just viewing what we are about to submit. But I'm going to click on submit return because when I click on submit return, it's going to make some cells active. In other words, some cells will be open for editing and that's what I'm interested in. I just want to show you how, what you can do and what you cannot do. So let me click on submit return. When I click on submit return, it's going to show me, you're going to see what will happen. So I click on submit return right there. When I click on submit return, let me click next here. Of course, when I click next here, it's going to go next to the next tab up here. So I click next. So we're on the tax computation summary. So when I click on this tax computation summary, okay, we are looking at here VAT amount. We have total output VAT for the period right there. Then adjustments to output tax. Now, number two here, as you're seeing adjustments to output tax, we're having like a plus sign here. When we click on this plus sign, it's going to expand 
and give us other details so when i click on the plus sign as you can see here it has expanded so clicking of course when you, for, for the, this company that i am filing for i am definitely not going to fill in anything because it is not applicable i just want to do an overview and for this specific case study we are doing these things are not applicable to this taxpayer so the, you just the, the 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 cells that you see that are white you come and fill in the figures where applicable outstanding payment of supplies made to government for the current period and all these things so the same thing is true for input tax allowed for the period i come and click on that plus button let me first close this one if i click on that minus button up here they go back so input tax allowed for the period from efris information input tax allowed for the period here is just that 15 million 377 399 so i'll click on that and then it will show me all that information so i've clicked it back that is input tax for the period but this is just tax computation summary if you come back here to section b2 vat charged on imported services in case you have vat that has been charged on imported services you come and click on that you fill in the figure here additional imported services that is just as far as tax computation summary goes however uh, we have the tab here for sales and purchases let's have a look at what is there let's go to the tab for sales right there so of course the tab for sales here we i would like you to take note of these columns okay we have uh, uh, pre-filled values that are vat exclusive for sales we have the column for pre-filled values the first column then we have the second column for additional sales okay then we have the third column which is showing the total and then of course the rate that is applicable then the output vat so now the pre-filled values here the first column is showing figures that have been picked from efrish the pre-filled values that 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 means now for the company that we the case study that we're dealing with here since it deals in standard rated supplies you see that it is only option for local standard rated that are that is filled okay however if in case it's a company that has local exempt or zero rated or whatever deemed whatever or like you're seeing these headings here okay so the pre-filled values from efforts will come and populate themselves here that's how it is now we get to the next column here we have additional cells that are VAT exclusive this next column now for the additional cells these are basically cells that did not go through EFRIS, but you'd like to declare them as cells, VAT cells. So that is what we mean by the second column here. So for this particular case, this, since this one deals in exclusively in standard rated cells, so it would mean that if the ones that went through EFRIS are 3 million and blah, 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 3.758, these are the cells that went through EFRIS. So the ones that didn't go through EFRIS, we fill them here. Let me give an example. Let's say it's three, four, three, triple zero, like that. Maybe it is three million, like that. So after, I, as you can see, if I fill them in here like that, let me add another figure here just to make it consistent. Let's say it's thirty-four million. Did go through Efris. So when I fill it in here, you realize that in the third column here, they've added up. We get the ones that are pre-filled plus the ones additional that I the, the figure that I manually put. Then we have total sales okay and of course here we see in the that is in the third column it's showing us the total sales in the fourth column it's showing us the rate applicable to that total figure and then the output charge uh, output vat is six million as you can see now of course i'm going to delete this because this is not applicable to this remember here we are in a live environment okay so that's the thing in case you that there are anything additional that you would like to do okay in case there is a any additional sales that you'd like to add this is how you do it so you if you come down here as you can see they are telling us that do you have additional sales to declare so when we click on yes the yes is going to make these uh the the yes makes the things that what you call the sales to become white the ones that can be edited now for us since we do not have additional sales to clear i'm going to come and click no when i click no everything grays out it becomes all gray and so after it becomes gray then i can go ahead and click next so i click next of course when i click next it's going to take me to the purchases column when i click next it's going to take me to the purchases tab so i come and click next so when i click next 
same here the, um, again it's the same explanation like before we have the first column which is showing the prefilled values of VAT the prefilled values from FRIS the next one the disputed purchases amount okay now how do you how is it possible that someone is able to be disputing purchases for let me give an example let's say here standard local standard rated sales for the period okay they are here those are the 85 million those are the figures that are coming in from efris okay now you you might be maybe it's rare but it's possible that you could be having purchases that you don't understand and then you go ahead and dispute them let's say um you could be having uh, someone can at random can use your tin to import products and they use your tin to pay taxes or whatever so it means that those purchases are going to show up on your in your in your tin as, as maybe probably as you know just as purchases so um, if you do not understand the purchases that are good that you're seeing you, do, you can dispute them from here by simply putting the amount of exclusive of VAT that you think is not. Now here it is 85 million. That is the input. Now you can say, uh, uh, I do not understand where the 80 million is coming from. So it becomes 80. I'm just giving an example. So you realize that this 80 million that I've put here as purchases that I'm disputing, that is I've looked into my FRIS reports and I've identified that there are some items that I don't understand. So it means here uh, the, the value from Efris is 85, but the ones that I'm disputing that I think I don't understand are 80. So it means that the net purchases, when these two figures, when you subtract them, that is in the third column, you end up with the net purchases. And then of course, in the fourth column, we to, it's, they are showing us the rate at which it's, which is 18%, then the input VAT incurred will be, will reduce to that. Of course, I'm just showing that as an example. So let me go ahead and delete this since there is nothing, it does not apply here, but you get the idea. The way the columns are arranged here is the same way I had explained. The case study we are dealing with is a company that is exclusively dealing in local or standard rated supplies. That's why it's only this column that is filled. But if you are dealing in other supplies, like zero residue exempt the other columns will or the other cells will also be filled according to what applies to you so if i'm to scroll down as you're able to see again they're asking us down here that do you dispute any of the pre-filled purchases there's the option for yes here and there's the option for no okay if i click yes yes simply means that is when these cells become white and I'm able to fill in the figures. But since for this specific case, we do not dispute any of that, I'm going to come in here and say no. So I'll click no. When I click no, as you can see, it's going to gray out. So there's nothing to edit. So I'll go ahead and click next right there. When I click next, it takes us to the next tab from purchases. It takes us to the input tax allowed. So of course, like input tax allowed not every input tax that we incur is creditable that is uh, there's a lot of there's quite some theory behind that to explain it i am not going to go into those details now but just know like not every input tax is creditable when you when you make the purchases Remember, input tax comes from either purchases or administrative expenses, or it comes from uh, imports. Okay, so again, speaking, so so this is where the action takes place. Now, for those ones that are dealing in either stand uh, mixed supplies, you you get to choose the method of input tax apportionment. It's either the normal method, or call it the default method, or the standard alternative method. So you get to choose which one of these ones that is applicable and the rest will be history. For this particular case, we, it's, it's not going to work since this one is dealing in exclusively uh, standard rated supplies. This does not apply for this taxpayer that we are using to explore how to file a VAT return. 
So basically, it's just that part one, it's, we select the apportionment method. Part two is talking about the input tax incurred for the period. Now, of course, the input tax incurred for the period here, as you can see from line number two, the input tax incurred for the period here is 15 million. And this definitely is coming from EFRIS. It's a pre-filled uh, figure. Then we have three. Then we are supposed to add a creditable input tax. Okay, so all these figures will come through here. And next, uh, total input tax for the period is definitely, of course, that. Yep, for our case, it's the 15 million coming from EFRIS. Less uncreditable input tax. Uh, there are various uh, variations on this. I'm not going to go into the details of each, but uh, definitely you just have to read through and you fill in or you, you fill in what is applicable. I think in a future video, I'll take the time to explain each and every aspect of this. Then um, for, let's stick to our case study. So in our case study, none of this applies. There's nothing that we need to fill in here. Everything is just clear. So that's the input tax allowed. So we go to VAT withholding credit. I go to the next. Let me click next down here. So we go to VAT. VAT withholding credit. So we come to the VAT withholding credit. Here again, with our case study, it is not applicable. But this is where information on VAT withholding will populate itself. Then we get to the next tab, which happens to be the tax summary. When I click on that. So the tax summary is basically showing us everything that happened for the period. Okay. So we have the principal tax, the penalty, the interest, the total amount, the principal tax. Definitely this is what came out of the period. In other words, the input tax minus the output, I mean, the output tax minus the input tax for that specific period that we are dealing with. That's what happens to be the principal tax. Then we have penalty. In case you are filing this late, that is, it would show up here. Then we have interest. In case you're having interest on unpaid uh, taxes, definitely it will show up here. Take note that uh, payment deadline for filing and payment is the same. So that's where the interest will show up there. Then we have the total amount. Definitely the total amount that is after adding these three columns. We get to have the total amount, then how much you paid against that total amount will show up there. And then the net liability is what we're having here at the end. Okay, so basically after that, then we shall enter this text here, which is XVFB7S. Okay. Um, that's the, the text we've entered and then I can go ahead and click submit and then I will have submitted my return. Now here's the thing. Uh, the reality is since this portal began, there have been issues. There has been a lot of issues that have been reported to URA and the URA IT department has been working around the clock to improve. From the time this new web portal was released, there have been improvements that have been made. And I believe there is a continuous improvement going on. So, um, like you've all seen, I have clicked the thing, the submit button. But this thing is not going. The, the, the return is not being submitted. It's yet another issue that I think needs to be handled. So as of now, because I have been having quite a number of uh, you people trying to tell me about, you know, I should show a video on how to navigate the new web-based return for VAT. So um, at least I've been able to explore and show you how it is done. As of the time of making this video, um, the, there is an issue. For those of you that are trying to submit a return and there is a VAT claimable or an offset, when you click the word submit, 
man, the thing is not being submitted. This has been going on for the past two days. Today is 5th of December. Um, well, the deadline for filing is on 15th. So I am hoping that by the time it's 15th, this issue will have been resolved. So currently there is an issue that uh, returns that are having VAT payable, those ones are being submitted. Okay. Then for VAT returns that have a VAT claimable or where the number is negative, they are not being submitted. So yes, the case study that I've been using is a VAT claimable and I click the, the submit button and nothing is happening. But uh, because I am under pressure to make, the, I've been under pressure to make this video since, uh, since this new web portal thing came through, I'm just going to go ahead and upload it as is. And uh, when circumstances become better, uh, when URA continues to make improvements, I'll be making updated videos on the same. So I'll bring this video to a close. My name is Arnold Kisembo Rangakuramia. Thank you for watching.